Hey guys, in the last video we built a filament heating circuit for an 811A vacuum tube in an effort to build a vacuum tube test coil. And after several days of experimentation, I was finally able to get the device to function properly. So in this video, I'm going to explain how to build a high voltage oscillator circuit, how to wind a secondary coil, and finally the results I obtained. Let's get started. First of all, however, do you remember this schematic that was shown in my last video? Well, it's incorrect. This is the correct, correct schematic. For the correct schematic diagram, I have not only removed the rectifier diode and the plate inductor choke, but I've also connected one end of the grid leak circuit and the ground of the microwave oven transformer to opposite ends of the cathode. If this was not done, the device would not oscillate. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's take a look at the finished Tesla coil. Okay, so we're in the garage now with the Tesla coil, and as you can see, there has been a lot of progress done with the circuit. For starters, I want to run my secondary coil around a 22 inch long piece of 3.5 inch PVC with 30 gauge enameled copper wire using this winding jig. I use this device that uses system of gears to count the number of turns on the coil. My secondary coil personally has 2,135 turns, and in the end it only took about an hour from start to finish. Even after the painstaking effort of winding a secondary coil, I still had to wind two more coils, the primary and feedback coils. In order to wind these two coils, I thought I would have to purchase a massive piece of 6 inch PVC pipe. But thankfully, when I was shopping at Goodwill for a microwave oven for the power supply, I stumbled upon this glass flower pot, which not only is the perfect size for the two coils, but also prevents arcing to them from the secondary coil. And in the end, this worked extremely well. Now to the coils themselves. To wind the primary coil, I purchased a roll of 15 feet of 14 gauge copper wire, and wound 20 turns around the flower pot. This coil serves as the primary inductor. For the feedback coil, I simply wound 35 turns of 28 gauge enameled copper wire around the flower pot. This coil tells the vacuum tube when to stop conducting. It is important to remember that this, this coil must be wound in the same direction as the primary coil. Now let's talk about the oscillator, the oscillator circuit. For my power supply, I use a small microwave oven transformer. This transformer outputs less than 2000 volts, and the way I know is by looking at the voltage rating of the capacitor that was found inside of the microwave. If the capacitor is only rated for 2000 volts, then the output voltage of the transformer cannot exceed that limit. From the length of the arcs created by this transformer, I would estimate the output voltage to be anywhere from 1800 to 1900 volts, a voltage that the vacuum tube can handle without being destroyed by internal arcing, which would be very bad. Now let's talk about the tank tank capacitor. For my tank capacitor, I used a really nice doorknob capacitor that I had gone for, my, for Christmas. This capacitor forms an LC circuit with a primary coil, and the frequency at which it oscillates can be found using this formula. Now let's take a look at the grid, grid leak circuit. For my grid leak capacitor, I used a bank of 2000 volts 10 nanofarad capacitors that ended up having a capacitance of about 2 nanofarads. This was put in parallel with, with a 5 kilo ohm resistor. The resistor permits direct current charge to leak from the capacitor and is used to set up the grid leak bias. Finally, I built a wooden base to hold everything together and installed a fan from one of the microwaves to blow up cool air at the vacuum tube. I connected the fan before the filament switch so that it turns on as soon as you, as soon as you plug in the filament transformer. Alright, now that we all, we all understand how the circuit was built, let's go ahead and fire up the Tesla coil. Alright, we're in the garage again, garage again, and one thing you may have noticed is that there's two power cords coming from the Tesla coil. These two need to be connected on different circuits, otherwise the device would easily pop any 15 amp break. Anyway, the first thing that needs to be done is connect the device to, to a radio frequency ground, which is a long copper rod that was hammered into the ground outside. Afterwards, we put the vacuum tube tube into this plug I made. I will definitely make a video in the future on, on how to make these plugs, it's very useful not to have to pay $12 and wait a week for a, for a plug for the vacuum tube. After that is done, we must heat the filament of the, the vacuum tube by first plugging in the filament transformer, and then pulling the switch for filament. And as you can see, the vacuum tube will begin to heat. After a couple seconds of this, we pull the soft start bypass switch, and the vacuum tube will begin to glow at full power. Finally, we plug the microwave oven, oven transformer into a variac, which as its name implies, can vary the AC voltage going to the transformer. Now we flip the plate switch, turn on the variac, and slowly raise the voltage. As you can see, we are getting a breakdown on the test switch, and the device can turn off the light bulb when we're three feet away. It's really powerful.
in order to turn it off, we first lower the voltage of the variac, switch off the variac, turn off the plate switch, stop the soft start bypass, and turn off the filament transformer. The vacuum tube Tesla coil is now off. That was pretty cool, so here's how, here's how it works. In order to understand the working, working principle behind a vacuum tube Tesla coil, I believe that it is important to first understand how a vacuum tube works. The 811A is a triode, meaning that it consists of three electrodes. A filament, which is this V at the bottom, a grid, which is this dotted line, and a plate, or anode, which is this upside down T at the top. When you pass a, a cur current through the filament, or cathode, thermionic emission occurs. Thermionic emission is the, is the liberation of electrons from an electrode by virtue of, it te of its temperature. It essentially is re the releasing of energy supplied by heat. And since there is no air in the, in the tube, these electrons can flow freely up to the up to the plate or anode, like this. However, a br brilliant man by the name of D Lee DeForest discovered that if you put a grid of wire between the cathode and the anode, you can control the flow of electrons inside of the valve by applying a negative, a positive or negative potential on the grid. The reason for this is that a negative charge on the grid repels the negative electrons in the same way that two magnets can repel each other. Similarly, if you apply a positive potential on the grid, you can cause the tube to conduct even more electrons by, even more by attracting electrons. This invention was named the thermionic triode. Now that we understand how vacuum tubes work, let's take a look at the schematic for the Tesla coil. In this circuit, there are only five components that need to be understood in order to understand how the circuit works. The tank capacitor, the primary coil, the secondary coil, the feedback coil, and the vacuum tube. As we learned before, vac vacuum tubes can conduct electrons if the grid is neutral. Therefore, as soon as power is switched on, a current will flow through the primary coil. This will create a magnetic field around it. This magnetic field will not only induce a current into the secondary coil, but will also induce a current into the feedback coil, which will cause a negative potential on the grid. This, as we learned before, repels electrons and stops them from getting to the plate. This means that there is, there is no longer current flowing through the primary coil. But, since there is a capacitor connected in parallel with it, the current will look like this, dying out eventually. These oscillations will continue to induce a current into the secondary coil but are not strong enough to, to stop the tube from conducting. Which means that the, that, the, that the vacuum tube will conduct once more and current will once again flow through the primary coil, repeating the cycle over and over again hundreds of times a second. This, due to the high turns ratio, causes a very high voltage on the secondary coil. However, due to the flyback effect and resonance, the voltage on the secondary coil is much higher than if it were a simple transformer. This circuit was extremely fun to, fun to build, and the results were extremely amazing. That being said, the, the microwave oven transformer that must be used to power the circuit outputs about 2,000 volts and can deliver enough current to kill you instantly. Therefore, if you do attempt this project, do it at your own risk and remember that you are responsible for your own safety at all times. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching.